One of the prevailing questions from the Supreme Court justices today was whether upholding Colorado's decision to disqualify Donald Trump from the ballot would ultimately give an unwarranted amount of power to a single state to decide who gets to be president of the United States. Why should a single state have the ability to make this determination, not only for their own citizens, but for the rest of the nation? Because Article 2 gives them the power to, to appoint their own electors as they see fit. If this court affirms the decision below, determining that President Trump is ineligible to be president, other states would still have to determine what effect that would have on their own state's law and state procedure. Well, I mean, if we, if we affirmed and we said he was ineligible to be president, yes, maybe some states would say, well, you know, we're going to keep him on the ballot anyway. But I mean, really, it's going to have, as Justice Kagan said, the effect of Colorado Colorado deciding, and it's true. Joining me now is Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold. She was represented today by Colorado's Solicitor General, Shannon Stevenson, who argued before the Supreme Court. Thank you for being here, Secretary Griswold. So I'll let you answer that question, um, because it did seem that some of the justices had it. Why should Colorado get to decide who can be president of the United States for all the states? Uh, well, first off, I, I don't think that that necessarily would play out like that. But if it did, ultimately, it's up to states how they choose to appoint the electors to the Electoral College. Uh, and it's also up to states, uh, as far as we know, as of now, to be able to have ineligible people kept off their ballots. Uh, you know, one of the things that really was striking to me about the court's argument is that if they are so focused on political outcomes, mm. if they're so focused on one state having the ability to swing a presidential election, well, why don't they look towards Georgia and their voter suppression laws? Why don't they look at the states that are trying to swing elections by suppressing the vote? Uh, so ultimately, I, I think um, that line of, of uh, argument is, is not founded in the Constitution, but we'll see what the United States Supreme Court decides. It's such a good question. I'd love to ask John Roberts, who, since he was a young lawyer in the Reagan administration, has been opposed to the Voting Rights Act. So I bet they'd have a fascinating answer, but it's a good point. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, there was, what did you make of the part of the, of the debate that talked about other forms of ineligibility? If somebody from, uh, that was born outside the United States said, I want to be on the ballot, could you disqualify, could they be disqualified from being on the ballot? If somebody was under the required age constitutionally, um, or if someone didn't even live in Colorado, could, could could you all exclude them? What did you make of that part of the argument? Because it didn't seem clear. It seemed almost as if the argument from Trump's lawyers was whoever wanted to run, right, in theory could at least run and then it would be resolved later if they win. I would say the Trump attorneys went even further. Um, not only was the argument that all ineligible people should be able to be on the ballot, they went so far as to argue that every insurrectionist has the right to be on the ballot. And even if Trump was found guilty under criminal insurrection, he could still be on the ballot in president because presidential immunity. So it's just one more, uh, one more of the same playbook from Donald Trump. He refuses to recognize what he did. What he did was incite a violent mob, cause congressmen to run in fear of their lives and assault the Constitution in an insurrection. Uh, and he continues to say, even if he is guilty of the insurrection of other crimes, well, it's fine because the laws and the Constitution just don't apply to him. Uh, so I sure hope that the United States Supreme Court sees through the Trump mob boss mentality and makes him face conse the consequences for his actions. In the, under the argument, you know, you're an attorney, so you can explain this. Under the argument that was made today, could a Jefferson Davis, somebody who had to your point, committed insurrection, then turn around and run. Because it, it wasn't clear to me who, in their mind, could not be on the ballot. Well, I, I, th I think just to take one step back, we shouldn't read too much into the questions the justices are asking. 
Uh, you know, in the Colorado Supreme Court, some of the justices who ended up disqualifying President Trump from the ballot were asking pretty aggressive questions that would lead you to think that they were on the other side. Uh, so I, I do think it's, it's premature. Mm -hmm. uh, but part of this is it's such an unprecedented situation because it was literally quite some time since the Civil War that we had an insurrection like this. Yeah. Donald Trump broke the law. He needs to face consequences for everything he did to try to steal the presidential election, which was not just the insurrection. Let me let me play one soundbite for you. This is Chief Justice Roberts on because the other thing they seem to be concerned about, as you pointed out, were the political consequences of taking Donald Trump off the ballot. Take a listen. I would expect that uh, you know, a goodly number of states will say, uh, whoever the Democratic candidate is, you're off the ballot, and others, uh, the, for the Republican candidate, you're off the ballot, and it'll come down to just a handful of states that are going to decide the presidential election. That's a pretty daunting consequence. Well, certainly, Your Honor, the fact that there are potential frivolous applications of a constitutional provision isn't a reason— Well, no, hold on. I mean, you might think they're frivolous, but probably the people who are bringing them may not think they're frivolous. Is that a, something we should consider and be concerned about? Well, I, I guess the United States Supreme Court is, um, but I personally do not think that far-right Republican witch hunts are a reason to not apply the Constitution to Trump's action in the insurrection. Uh, you know, there can be bad political actors that uh, accuse this, that, and the other, but we have a judicial system. Uh, and just like in Colorado, uh, Donald Trump had a five-day trial. He had an appeals process to the Colorado Supreme Court and then ultimately to the United States Supreme Court. Uh, this, this case isn't based on political accusation. It's based on real fact, testimony, witnesses, and a judicial proceeding. Uh, so I, I sure hope the court does not focus his decision on that, because temper tantrums from a political party is not good reasoning uh, to not enforce the law and protect the nation from an oath-breaking insurrectionist. Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold, thank you. Thank you for your time.